Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm coming to you from my car because as a mom of four um, and working, having my own business, we're always on the go it seems like um, in this season of life. So I'm coming from you from my daughter's volleyball practice. <laughs> but as you saw in my first video, I did just a brief overview of how I started with $2,500 and now I have a seven figure business. And so the next step, if you feel like you are ready to dive in and ready to go for this, there are some steps you want to follow. Um, I'm in Indiana, so I will tell you what I had to do for Indiana, but just know it can vary state by state. So most states are really good if you Google, you know, small business in Kentucky or small business in, in Illinois, the websites will have information for you. Um, the state governments will have information for you and steps to follow. Um, I went to inbiz.in.gov to help me. Um, know what steps I needed to take, but I will tell you the first thing you need to do is come up with a name and you have to be very careful about this because you do not want to take the name of a trademarked company. If that happens, you could be in business for a year. If they find out that you took their name, they can come back and then you have to change everything. You do not want to do that. I actually, right now, I went to go trademark my name because I'm the first to have this name and there's two other businesses that also have this name. I had the choice to go after them, but I decided not to because I feel like as small business owners, um, it's hard enough. So I don't want to cause them problems, them headaches, but just know that if you do that you can have companies come at you. So you want to first establish a name. I um, decided to use my grandma's name. So LMA, she is 94. She's an assisted living facility now. Um, she gets bourbon delivered her to her at 4 p.m. every day. We actually have to write a script from the doctor. The nurses bring it with their gloves on to her room. She is spunky um, and funny and just, um, she was, her and my mom were great role models in my life growing up. So I love the name LMA. We named our daughter after my grandma. So I thought that was fitting for um, the name of my store. So after you establish a name, you have to file for an EIN number. So again, check out your local state government's guidelines because they have all of those resources for you um, that can help you get your tax ID number, which is your EIN number. And that's the number that you use when you wanna to try to find vendors for tax purposes. So once you establish a name, establish your EIN number, you also need to decide, do you wanna be a sole proprietor, an LLC, so forth. I started out and ran my business the first year as a sole proprietor. I then moved to an LLC, but now we have grown so much that we're an S corporation. So you want to establish your entity because that affects taxes. And um, if you are going to start out with a business, I highly, highly recommend getting a good accountant. I did not get a good account in the beginning and I ended up having to pay a lot of money to the government because taxes were not done correctly. Since then, I have got some of that money back because my accountant now is amazing. I use Storen Financial. Jason Bailey is my accountant. I call him my CFO, my chief financial officer because he is incredible. He helps me dive into numbers, look at my analytics, which I will teach you all of that as well in future videos. But it's very important, I cannot stress enough, the importance of getting a good accountant. So step one, get your name. Step two, get your EIN. Step three, set up a good accountant. Your accountant's gonna help you with the process of taxes. When you're ready to hire employees, we'll help you with that process, all the paperwork, payroll, all of that, which I will get to in a future video as well. But I can't stress enough, what I feel like made my business so successful is because I saw there was a need in my community. So if there are 500 boutiques in your town, opening a boutique, another one, might not give you the success you're looking for. So if you're wanting to do like a home decor store, or if you notice if you're wanting to do a restaurant, or if you're wanting to provide some sort of service, look in your community. Check out your community, see what's offered, see what's available, what's not, what you feel like there's a need for. In 2014, I had probably two or three places in my hometown or in my town that we're in now 
that I could shop for clothes. And boutique clothes were new. They were so cute. They were kind of leading the way in trends. And so I felt like that was a need in our community. And that is really what I attribute a lot of my success to was because there was a need. So scope it out. Even if like um, you're wanting to do a boutique and maybe the community next to you doesn't have one. So in my area, boutiques are everywhere, but I know of some towns that need them. Um, that is on my future radar, but right now my kids are my priority. Um, with our oldest getting ready to be a senior, which is crazy to me, I want to make sure I'm available for him and I just don't want to miss these years with my kids because they're so important. I will tell you, being a business owner, you sacrifice a lot of time. So the first five years, I worked a lot. You saw in the videos where the kids were at the store a lot with me. So keep that in mind. If you're a mom with young kids, is that what you want right now? If you're a mom with older kids, is that what you want right now? So you have to decide what is best for you and your family. So again, to get started, the first steps you need, get a name, get an EIN number, and get a good accountant. So, and establish your entity. So in the next videos, I'm going to teach you where you can find your products. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Have a great day.